This is Torah in the courts of heaven. And today's Torah portion is Bo, which means go. But also Bo can mean come. So it's come or go. And as we've said many times before, any word actually in Hebrew that you find in the whole of the Bible applies somehow to Yeshua. And it's so it becomes obvious when we read the word Bo, which means to come or to go, it's exactly what we are looking for now. We're looking for Yeshua to return. We're looking for him to come back. And part of our mission, part of a believer's mission, that is, not just my mission, but everyone who's a faithful follower of his, our jobs, our call is to call for him to come back, to ask him to actually plead for him to return. The Bible speaks about those who uh, rewarded will be the ones who diligently look and cry out for his return. And that's what we do. Uh, this world obviously is in a, a real mess, a real terrible mess, to put it lightly. And our only hope out of this is Yeshua. So we cry out for him to return. We come for him to come back. In the Torah portion, it's, we're in the book of Exodus. And in Exodus chapter 10 and verse 10, it says this. Then he said to them, the Lord had better be with you when I let you go and your little ones go. Beware for evil is ahead of you. Now this, this quote here is from the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh, of course, uh, is not good. He's evil. Sometimes he is a foreshadow or a type of Satan. He is the one that we were in bondage to before we came to the Lord. And just as Israel was in bondage to Egypt and really mostly to uh, Pharaoh because it was his rules and his, his uh, declarations that made life horrible for the Jewish people, for the Hebrew people in Egypt. Uh, and of course, you know, the plagues, we're coming up on the plagues and we're getting actually near the time of Passover. So it's, it's no accident, of course, that these tour portions that lead up to Passover are speaking of what happens on Passover, how that all of this is remembered from year after year, to year after year. And I believe that will be throughout eternity that the Lord will have us recall the great and mighty works and acts that he did to save the children of Israel from the Egyptians, from bondage, from all the terror that they had been under for so long. And uh, you see this quote saying to them that you'd better beware. So he's, he's invoking fear into to the children of Israel. And isn't that exactly what you see happening today, right now? The world... The world system, the systems of the world, they are working overtime to evoke fear into you, into everyone. And it's all about control. You see, the Pharaoh would understand he is only one man, but he had to keep the people in fear uh, with this authority of his so that he could maintain control. And that's what we see happening in the world today. There's so many of these world governments are evoking fear in the people so that they can control the people. And this is what we see. But we have to remember that we are not under this world system. We are living in this world. As Yeshua said, you're in the world. You were born into this world, but you weren't born into this world system. Now, this world system would want you to believe that you are part of this world and, and you have to submit to it but you don't have to submit to it. You only have to submit to the Lord, Yeshua. And so that's what we need to do, and that's what we should do. And sometimes we're going to have to uh, stand against what this world system is trying to demand of us. It may cost us our very physical life to do so. However, they can't take our soul. 
And rem remember this, that Yeshua has all of our evil past covered. Everything that's happened in our past that perhaps we evoked on ourselves, it's been covered by the blood of Yeshua. In Yeshua, all of our evil past and is in the past. So Passover, or Pashach, begins March the 27th of this year, 2021. And that's important because, again, we're walking towards that. We're getting near. Uh, we're just over a month away from celebrating that most wonderful time of year uh, in the memory of all of this. And, of course, the greater picture is that Yeshua was uh, crucified on the Passover as he became and was the Passover lamb. And his his blood covers us from all sin. His blood is so very important. And as it speaks in Hebrews chapter 12, that his blood still speaks from heaven. So when we're in a, a difficulty, we can think about taking our case, whatever it may be, to the courtrooms of heaven and standing before the great and true judge, the Lord. And of course, we know we have an enemy that's there pleading uh, against us. But we have an advocate, as it speaks about in First John, an advocate, which is Yeshua. We have an advocate with the Father. That's a lawyer. We have someone pleading our case. And he can plead our case because he has shed his blood. His blood is the what uh, declares us innocent. If we plead that blood over our own lives, we can declare our own innocence. But also, I believe, we can also take cases of um, prayers, of course, of illness or sickness or disease or infirmities. We can take these to the Lord and we can plead our case with his righteous blood and ask for healing, ask for miracles, ask for deliverance in our lives. And he does do those things. Exodus 10, 28 says, Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take heed to yourself and see my face no more. So, so Pharaoh is speaking to Moshe, Moshe, Moses, and he says, get away from me. Take heed to yourself and see my face no more. You see, Moses has been up in Pharaoh's face multiple times, uh, letting him know what the next plague was going to be if he indeed didn't let the children of Israel go. And over and over again, he didn't let them go. And so now Pharaoh is worn out. He's tired of Moses. He's sick of Moses. And he says, <clears throat> he says that. Then he goes on and he says, for in the day that you see my face, you shall die. And of course, uh, he's wrong. But basically, he has spoken um, over himself. It's interesting. The enemy does this so many times where what the enemy will proclaim over you, what his assignment over you might be, when he speaks it, many times it becomes his own uh, sentence, his own declaration over his own self. And so Moses says, you have spoken well. I will never see your face again. And it's true. Uh, Pharaoh spoke this uh, judgment and this curse over Moshe, but indeed it would be him that would not see Moses' face anymore because he would be killed when he chased after uh, Israel and was overtaken by the waters of the Red Sea. So don't listen to the noise of the enemy. You see, it's just noise. The enemy wants to frighten us. Actually, not just frighten. Frighten maybe is not the strong word. He wants to cause great fear in our lives and provoke us to be in fear because when we are in fear, then we are paralyzed. It's it's kind of interesting because right now as I, I'm doing this tour portion, which actually this tour portion was several weeks ago, um, but right now as I'm doing it, we're, there's snow, uh, deep snow all around our home. And, you know, I guess we could get out and possibly make it somewhere, but it's so deep, I just sense that our vehicle would just be, uh, you know, tramped down by the snow and we would get we would just be stuck in our own driveway probably but the point i'm making is uh that's what that's what 
the enemy wants to do. He wants to just slow you down, slow you down till finally you can't move and you're frozen. You're just stuck. And so therefore then you can't do anything for God. And again, our main purpose, your main purpose, every single believer's purpose, whatever mission you might have, our main purpose is to bring Yeshua honor and glory, bring honor and glory to God Almighty. That's our purpose. And you could always do that even if you are paralyzed, even if you're a person that you cannot move. Maybe you have a quadriplegia for whatever event, but yet even in your position that you have, you can still praise God. You can still bring Him honor and glory and praise. And that's what He desires from each of us. No matter what's going on in our life, if we don't allow the enemy to trap us, to keep us from praise and worship, he loses and we win. It says in Isaiah 14 and verse 16, those who see you, and this is speaking about uh, the enemy, about Satan, and one day we will see him. It says those who see you will gaze at you and consider you and say, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? In other words, it's the kind of a statement that we're going to look at him, we're going to gaze at this enemy, and we're going to go, that's it? That's him? This guy right here was able to do all those things? I mean, it doesn't even seem likely. And I, it's just funny because I, I say that, and then I think of, for some reason, I think of Hitler, and I look at Hitler, and he was not a, he was not a very, you know, prominent type of man. He wasn't a big man. Um, Hitler, I believe, was possessed of the devil himself. And so he had this power, spiritual power, but in appearance, he didn't seem like anything at all that would be fearful. Uh, and yet he was very terrible, as we, of course, know. Uh, Hitler did probably the worst, uh, things on this earth, the worst evils that, that's ever been done, bar no one. But if we want to move away from the evil thought and think about the fact that, it, and just except in the matter of, just remember, everything evil is just a distraction in your life, and you need to just step over it. You just need to move around it. Just go around it and continue moving towards the Lord and His purpose, because the Lord is mighty. The Lord is almighty. And Satan is basically nothing. Um, now we're going to talk about an event, the most important of events. And this was, we talked about Passover and how it was going to begin uh, just here in a little over a month, in March the 27th. <clears throat> and so it's a holy convocation. Uh, the Passover is a very holy convocation, or a kadosh. Mikra. It's, it's, it's in a very important, uh, appointment, exactly, for God, that we keep for God. And it says in John chapter 19 and verse 31, therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might not be broken and that they might be taken away. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to end right here with this, with this short teaching on this scripture. Because mostly as a, a Christian growing up, uh, in America or in an English speaking country or really basically any Gentile nation, uh, that's not Jewish. In other words, if you're, if you're Jewish, you would understand this. Even if you're not a believer at this point in Yeshua or a follower of Yeshua, you can see what this is speaking about. It talks about that, you know, when Jesus was put on the cross, most likely, almost surely, it was like on a Wednesday evening, uh, or excuse me, Wednesday morning. And by Wednesday, by Thursday, by Thursday, by Wednesday evening, he was taken off the cross because the next day on that particular week would have been the feast of unleavened bread. So the Passover was fulfilled in the fact of, you know, the lambs were been slaughtered. And then um, the next day, which begins in the evening, would be uh, a high holy day. And the high holy days are all called Sabbaths. But see, as just regular Christians, 
when we hear the word Sabbath, we always go right to Saturday. It's the day, the seventh day of the week, or Saturday. And some of us even have the very strange idea that the Sabbath was changed, and now the Sabbath is actually Sunday. Well, of course, God never changed the days of the week, and it's always been the Sabbath, and the Jews have kept the Sabbath. And you could say, well, how do we know that the Sabbath didn't get changed? Well, because we can go back in the Jewish history all the way back. I mean, back, you know, to uh, before before Christ, before, you know, the temple was destroyed, all the way back. It, it, they kept the Sabbath forever, and they never stopped keeping the Sabbath. You see, there's always been observant Jewish people that keep the Sabbath. So it's never changed from that day. But we're not even talking about that day. We're talking about the high holy day of unleavened bread. Because if you look in Leviticus 23, it tells us that when you keep unleavened bread, the first day and the last day are high holy days, or Shabbats, you could say. Uh, that's what they would say in their Hebrew language. So, Yeshua was on the cross, and because it was about to be unleavened bread, uh, that would be on Thursday, then they, they wanted to make sure that he was dead because they didn't want to have to uh, have his body put in the grave uh, on on the High Holy Day because then they wouldn't have been able to keep the Sabbath themselves. They wouldn't have been able to keep the feast themselves because they would have been ritualistically uh, contaminated from dead body. Uh, so if you remember, Pilate uh, does send soldiers to break legs and the, the purpose of that was so they go ahead and die quicker because without the uh, use of their legs to push them up, themselves up to get a breath, they would suffocate quick more quickly. And But in the case of Yeshua, he was already dead. Uh, everything was in perfect order through God. And so they didn't have to break his legs. And it says in the Psalms that not a bone of his would be broken. So none of Jesus' bones were broken. They were all pulled out of joint in terrible and excruciating pain for sure, but they weren't broken. And so this happened this exact way, and he did all these things and more. It, it's a very, um, a very difficult study to go into great detail and study the crucifixion of the Lord, but I really think that it's imperative that every true believer does that, that we see just the excruciating horror that he went through in the physical for us, uh, which tells me there's nothing physical that you will ever have to endure, you or I, either one, will ever have to endure that would even surmount anywhere as close to the pain and suffering that Yeshua went, so that we would never be able to say that to him that he doesn't understand our pain or he doesn't understand our suffering, because most assuredly he does, and he did. He went through it all. But greater than that was the suffering and the pain that he was having from a broken heart, because all of this was caused by us. We did this to him. You and I caused this terrible uh, crucifixion in the Lord. But he did it because he loved us, and he has a purpose for our lives. So this is a very holy convocation in the Passover that it's very wonderful to celebrate and remember him. He says, as often as you do this, as often as you take the bread, you break the bread and you drink the drink, do it in remembrance of him. Do it in remember of what he did for us. And so I pray that that will be your heart this year and actually every day. Remember every day. Do you remember every day what the Lord has done for you?